time, the market price of a good or service does not reflect all the costs of producing it or the social benefits it might deliver. Externalities occur when the economic behaviour of certain individuals or companies imposes a cost or a benefit on second or third parties who had no say at all in the original behaviour. A positive externality occurs when a benefit from certain production is enjoyed by a second or third party. And a negative externality is a cost suffered by people who are not part of the transaction. Pollution is probably the most obvious modern example of a negative externality. Industrial activity and waste products in all their many forms compromise the environments and lives of people all over the world. But the negative effects are usually felt most acutely by the poorest communities who cannot move to greener pastures. Communities that are often not involved in the actual consumption of those goods that produce the pollution. The cost imposed on society by the use of motor cars is still being calculated. But their contribution to the greenhouse effect, climate change and global warming, are by now well documented. These externalities are so devastating that the car manufacturers are being forced, coerced or persuaded to produce new types of vehicles that bring far fewer negative externalities. Now with luck, the acknowledgement of these externalities hasn't come too late. Now, why does the existence of a negative externality cause a market system to fail? Well, the reason is that the cost of this negative externality has not been included in the price of this good or service. Neither the manufacturers, nor the sellers, nor the buyers of these cars have included the cost of the damage they do in setting the purchase price. In a market system, the price of a good or service is determined by demand and supply. And supply is determined by a number of factors, the cost of production being one of the most significant. When a typical profit-maximising firm calculates the cost of production, it only takes into account the private cost of the production process, what it has to pay out for all its variable and fixed costs. The firm ignores the social cost of its production, the negative externalities that it creates. Given that the private cost of production is generally lower than the social cost of production, because the negative externalities are not accounted for, the market price for the product is lower than it should be, lower than it needs to be to pay to correct these negative externalities. And because the price is too low, demand is higher than it should be. If the price of the goods were higher, to include the cost of correcting the negative externality, demand would be lower, leading to lower production and a drop in those externalities. Let's demonstrate this with the aid of our demand and supply curves. This supply curve, SS, reflects only the private cost of production for the firms in this market. If, however, the social or external cost of production were included, that supply curve would have been S2S2. Note that the difference between the two supply curves, S2S2 now includes both the private cost and the external social cost of production, which is reflected in the higher price and a lower quantity demanded. Because negative externalities are ignored, the market tends to overproduce the product in question and fails to achieve allocative efficiency. So what can be done to ensure that a socially efficient level of production is reached in the case of a negative externality such as pollution? Ronald Coasey, Nobel Prize winner for economics in 1991, has argued that if the two parties to an externality, the one causing it and the one suffering from it, can negotiate with one another, they could achieve an efficient allocation of resources. In the case of a negative externality, such as pollution, the most obvious form of action the government could take is to tax the polluter. This tax will increase the firm's cost of production, causing them to supply less. The supply curve shifts to the left, resulting in a higher price and reduced quantity in the market. We propose taking further steps to encourage energy efficiency and reduce harmful emissions, some of which have tax implications. An incentive for investments by companies in energy efficient equipment will be introduced 
in the form of a supplementary depreciation allowance. The levy on plastic shopping bags will be increased from 3 cents to 4 cents. An increase is proposed in the International Air Passenger Departure Tax, which was last raised in 2005-6. The existing excise duties on motor vehicles will be adjusted to take into account carbon emissions. It is important, furthermore, that we should encourage South African companies to take advantage of the clean development mechanism established in the Kyoto Protocol. A favorable tax treatment will therefore be introduced for the recognition of income derived from the sale of emission reductions. In terms of our diagram, the tax imposed should be equal to the external cost that was not taken into account by the polluter. In this way, the optimum social level of production can be reached. The external cost that previously had not been factored into the price has now been included. The externality is now part of the market mechanism. Government has the power, with its regulations and legislation, to force offending producers to reduce the pollution they create. It is thanks to legislation that we now use unleaded petrol. In this case, both the oil refineries and vehicle manufacturers had to adjust their products. It is also thanks to legislation that the use of certain plastic bags is banned and that smoking in many public places is prohibited. So tax is one way to balance out negative externalities. But there are other methods too. Government can grant permits to firms, allowing them to continue producing negative externalities. These permits are sold to polluters, giving them the right to pollute. This is quite a recent development. The government tries to determine the amount of pollution that it regards as acceptable, and it then sells the rights to pollute that much, but no more, to the highest bidders among all the suppliers. This might sound like a strange idea, favouring big business and creating opportunity for corruption. But if done transparently, using the fees collected from the sale of the permits for proper rehabilitation of the environment, it can, in theory, achieve a very constructive result. Those producers that are not willing to pay the market price for polluting must then decrease their production or change their technology. A major negative externality facing the world today is the emission of carbon monoxide into the atmosphere, contributing to the greenhouse effect and a rise in global temperatures. Dealing with this issue on a global scale requires the cooperation of many governments and the means to enforce regulations on different countries. The Kyoto Protocol of 1997 is such an attempt. The global acceptable level of emissions is calculated and countries are sold permits that allow them to pollute. Those countries that are able to keep their emissions below the level allowed by the permit can sell their surplus rights to pollute to those countries that are unable to stick to the levels permitted. In this way, an incentive is created for countries to decrease their emissions. But as with negotiations between communities and business, it's often difficult to get parties on an international level willingly to do the right thing. The world constantly needs to develop new measures to address the unwillingness of these parties to cover their social cost deficit. Fortunately, an externality can also be positive or beneficial. A positive externality occurs when a benefit is derived by a second or third party from the actions of another party. Inoculation against a disease such as smallpox or treatment for tuberculosis not only helps the individual that receives this benefit, but the surrounding community as well. A beautiful garden in the city provides a benefit to the residents overlooking the park and everyone else who enjoys it on a daily basis. Education not only benefits the individual with better job opportunities and earnings, but also benefits society. People with an education are less likely to resort to crime to survive, and the more educated people there are in the economy, the better equipped it is to develop and grow, creating employment and new business opportunities. If the decision of how much is to be supplied is left to the market alone, the market will tend to undersupply the goods and services that have a positive externality. This will lead to lower consumption or underconsumption of these goods and services that have social benefits. As a rule, 
The market only takes the private benefit or profitability into account, not the social benefit. The government, however, can make use of things like subsidies to encourage the supply of goods that have positive externalities. The opposite of a tax, a subsidy helps to lower the cost of production, so the supply curve can shift to the right, leading to a lower price and a higher quantity supplied. In South Africa, education is heavily subsidised. Without these subsidies, the number of people we educate would drop drastically.